Shall we go ahead? Okay. Thank you all very much for taking the time to join us both in person and virtually. I hope that you will find this a very interesting session. Uh, my name is Steve Alice, and I will be part of the group of presenters who will be discussing some of the work that we have been doing at CHISU, Country Health Information Systems and Data Use. We'll be providing some of the keys that we have seen for successful health information system strengthening, looking at multi-stakeholder engagement and gender integration and drawing from such diverse experiences as from Serbia, Niger, and Indonesia. So as far as the introduction goes, I will cover that. Uh, we will hear from our colleagues at Naled in Serbia. We'll hear from Yelena Bojevic, who will be online. Then we will move to Niger. We have Dr. Aida Munkela from the Ministry of Health in Niger. We will move then to Indonesia, where Noni Parmawati will be presenting. Then we will have a moderated discussion and time for questions and answers. So please feel free to put your questions in the chat. And for those of you in the room, we will have, uh, we will have time for a presentation for questions that we will take as well. So an introduction to CHISU. CHISU, we have a broad vision. So much of what we are trying to do is contained in the name. We have a USAID funded project. And CHISU stands for Country Health Information Systems and Data Use. So you can see we are very focused on strengthening the system and the information systems there and really ensuring that the data is being used. So the vision for us is to support, to have country health systems in which stakeholders at every level of the health system can access high quality data that's generated from multiple interoperated sources and really critically to use that data to guide policy, improve resource allocation, service delivery, and system performance. First is around health information systems governance. Ooh, let's see if I can get that to move. There we go. <laughs> the first is around health information systems governance and ensuring that there is a strong enabling environment for the host country health information system. So looking at policies, regulations, technical working groups. The second is around the software and systems. So the increased availability and again, interoperability of these systems to ensure there's quality data that is being produced. The third strategic objective is everything data. This is data demand, data use, data quality, data analysis, data visualization, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. And the fourth, which is equally critical working across these three strategic objectives, is to ensure that there is a robust ecosystem of non-governmental actors that can support the health information system across the three prior domains. So everything that we are doing, we are doing very closely collaborating with the host country government. And this is now looking at academia, civil society, and private sector to see how they can provide, play a role while CHISU is being implemented as well as after. So, <clears throat> so we move to the next, here we go. So this again is the vision and the objectives with a little bit more detail. The reason I'm showing this here is of course because everything is interrelated. We have to have, <clears throat> we have, to have some different ways of tracking things, but everything goes together. Without governance, having systems and software does not make sense. Having governance, but without the systems, and having systems without data use, none of this makes sense. So you have to have everything together, each playing a role to really support this vision. So in order to achieve this very ambitious vision, we work as a team. Uh, so we are a team led by JSI. We have some of our partners here in the room, actually, from uh, Vital Strategy, so it's good to see. I'm sure we have others online as well. We also have RTI International, MacroEyes, GemNet Health, and Gembi Health Systems, as well as a group of 14 different resource partners spread around the globe, <clears throat> representing expertise in diverse fields such as human-centered design, digital health, and data science. We are a global project. We are currently working in more than, actually in 17 countries. We will be working in more than 30 by the time the project is finished. So as you can see, we are working in Haiti, 
the Caribbean, South America, up in Serbia, West Africa, down to Southern Africa, and over to Indonesia. And each of these present very different contexts in which we are trying to work to address the health information systems challenges. Let me go back. There we go. With a project like this, of course, we were talking about data use and measurement. We are also quite obsessed with measurement. And how do we measure a health information system? It's very, it's very complex. So one of the tools that we use is called the Stages of Continuous HIS Improvement, or SOCHI. And one of the key elements of the SOCHI is really around multi-stakeholder collaboration. So, of course, it takes so many different players to be able to successfully drive change in the health information system and ultimately get us towards digital transformation that we are trying to achieve. So here, as you can see, we have the objectives for CHISU along the side, and these map very nicely to the five different domains of the SOCHI model, looking at leadership and governance, ICT infrastructure, standards and interoperability, data quality and use, and again, the management and workforce that is needed to be able to support all of this. And for everything that we are doing here, we have the capacity enhancement, and we are working to see how we can help move the health information system in every country from these early stages of emerging, repeatable, defined, and ultimately trying to get to optimized. Another component that we have, of course, is as a cross-cutting issue, is looking at gender inequity in what we are doing. So in order to do this, we are looking, need to look so much more than just looking to make sure we are counting people. <laughs> we have a gender plan, and for everything that we do, we want to ensure that we are really tracking and integrating gender into the work that we are doing. And so we have developed a number of tools for each step of every activity that we are doing. Even this activity now, we have taken gender considerations into. When we develop a work plan of activities, with the host country government at each place, we are interrogating our work plan to see what are the gender considerations that we could have in this activity? Where, what can we consider? And then we are also then reporting back on this. This is something that we are talking about in our management meetings to really try to be sure that we are comprehensively looking at gender in every aspect of the work that we are doing. So with that, I would like to turn it over to Yelena Boyevich, who is online. She is the program director uh, at Knowled, where she served for the past 20 years. She also wears an, an, another hat as the director for the since March of 2022. She has more than 20 years of experience in public policy and public-private partnerships and digitaliz di yeah, digitalization. And she has been a very strong partner of the project, working to strengthen particularly the areas of e-health governance in Serbia. So let's see if we can bring Elena on. Elena, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? We certainly can. This is fantastic. Everything is working. Okay. Now I will turn it over to you. And I will go ahead. We will advance your slides. So please go ahead. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, um, thank you, Steve, for, for giving the introduction and um, uh, providing a few inputs or uh, support uh, to present what Chizu does, because I think we, um, I would talk about um, collaboration with Chizu as well and how we could together advance through the program. Uh, first, I just wanted to present shortly uh, what uh, we have in, in Serbia and how the system works and why this um, collaborative approach worked for us. Uh, firstly, uh, in Serbia, our system is very decentralized. We started with the digitalization uh, 10 years ago and all of the local health providers developed their own informational systems and started the digitalization and uh, um, developing their own uh, health records and uh, registers. Uh, in order to advance further, um, back in 2020, we decided, the government decided to start uh, with the implementation of integrated uh, informational systems. And what they needed is the strategy um, to, uh, to um, have a joint understanding between different um, um, stakeholders on what does that mean? Where are we going and what are we going to um, do next? 
just a quick information about knowledge that I present. We are in uh, association of businesses and local governments. We are a public-private entity. And we, our role is to pri provide uh, support to the government in different reforms that they are doing. So we've been asked by the government to participate in the reform of the electronic health system in, uh, and provide support in strategic vision and help the government to design the strategy for um, digitalization of health. Next slide, please. So what we did, uh, we started in 2021 with the support of um, USAID and CHIZU project to organize stakeholders. Over uh, 50 people were uh, directly involved and over 100 indirectly in designing uh, the, the, the action plan and the program, uh, e-health program for the period 2022-2026. Um, we've been working on the on the program, I would say, for um, over maybe around uh, a year, and uh, the program was uh, um, adopted in December 2021. Uh, in addition to the designing a program, the system in Serbia is that, uh, first of all, you design a program that is a, a bit longer, covers the period of uh, five years in this. Um, uh, it could be a 10-year program as well, but since the digitalization is moving so fastly, uh, the, we agreed that we design a program that covers five years and then uh, provide them more detailed on how to implement it through the action plan. So we, at the end, the program had uh, five specific um, uh, objectives um, dealing with different uh, aspects of uh, digital health. First of all, uh, uh, enabling the governance, um, then um, creating or establishing um, um, the whole in, um, infrastructure or informational system um, um, as it is, and then uh, provide services, design services, of course, involve uh, on one hand the, the doctors, physicians, and people that are working in the system to help them and educate them on how to use uh, the systems. And then, uh, of course, uh, uh, help the end users use uh, the system because the whole thing we are doing uh, is because of the patients. So can we Next slide, please. So I um, I um, presented how we what we did, but uh, let me uh, start from the beginning. We established a government established something called coordination body or e health steering committee, consisting of uh, um, several ministers, and the the coordination body was headed by the by our prime minister because this was the top priority of the government uh, in 2020 and 2021 now of course still uh, the committee included 32 members uh, and um, included uh, ministers of finance defense ministry of health we have the separate just to uh, one mark we have a separate system like uh, defense has its own health system so we have over 300 public um, health providers that are um, state um, health providers, but we also have the military or defense uh, health um, system that goes in parallel. And in addition, we have a private sector uh, of health uh, providers and health services. So all of them were represented within this coordination body. Um, and this is how we started. In order to be more operational, we designed two working groups. One of them was working on the strategy and the action plan and what we want to do in parallel. And you know how governments usually do. We need to have, besides the strategy itself, we wanted to have a quick win or something that can be a quicker uh, effect of our joint uh, work that citizens or patients would see. And this is the second a group that was working on the electronic health record, on designing the centralized electronic health record. So the time, time frame was around uh, 12 months and the program was um, adopted. Uh, what is important to mention, and I wanted to say it uh, uh, here, is that our government changed um, last year. And um, just to prove the, the importance of this collaborative approach, uh, even though the government was, um, 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 there, there's a, where the, there, we had the elections, uh, even though the government changed in the sense that we had the new Minister of Health, um, the coordination party continued its work. Actually, it was reestablished um, again this year, uh, and we are continuing uh, following the implementation of the program, um, the strategy and the, and the action plan. So we are following the steps that were set in 2020, even that we had um, a different uh, Minister of Health. So 
Um, it just shows that the majority of people that were collaborating and working together on the strategy um, uh, continues pushing for the implementation of what was already agreed. We can go next. One of the things that uh, that Steve already mentioned, and this is uh, uh, where we had the key, I would say, a critical support by USAID. It was hard to put everybody on the same um, on the same level of understanding where we are right now. So each one of us and each one of the institutions has its own understanding of uh, um, the advancement of the health system uh, in Serbia. This is why we used Sochi as an excellent uh, tool. Um, uh, to kind of put us all on the same page of where we are in different areas, in different um, um, parts of, uh, of our health system. And this is what we uh, used to, uh, first of all, establish the basis of measurement through using the, 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 the HIS, then set goals for all of these subcomponents. And you'll see on the next slide how where we are on these subcomponents and how we want to improve. And of course, set the roadmap, identify the gap and see what we can do between the stage where we are and the stage that we want to advance to. So this was a tool that we jointly used and we were all on the same understanding of, um, of system in Serbia by using uh, Sochi. And this helped us understand why we are doing it. So uh, the, the way we, we did it, we had a core team to um, that was established to assess where we are, uh, but then we had... Um, a, uh, interviews, we had uh, desktop analysis, uh, desk review, then with the selected stakeholders, we discussed each of these uh, parameters within uh, within uh, Sochi. And then at the end, when we had already the whole um, situation mapped or the baseline mapped and the goals set, we also had a, um, a workshop where we went through the workshop and with the goals and what we set it up in order to kind of, um, um, again, align everybody on what we are trying to do. So uh, next, step, next slide, please. So this is how it looked like at the end. So as you can see, we are um, at the level uh, one or two in majority of these uh, um, uh, sub indicators. And this is where we want to advance. Uh, and this is what we all agree uh, agreed um, uh, about. I'm not gonna go into details of the of the whole system, but it just uh, shows you how it can be simply presented, and it's easier easier to understand by the by the whole group. So uh, this is uh, how we started. So we set the baseline, we set the goals, and then worked to um, develop from a blue dot to to green dot. <laughs> so this is uh, this is what we did. Next slide, please. This is how it looked like. <laughs> it seems clean uh, and neat when uh, I presented the chart or where we are and where we want to go. But just so you know, it was a messy uh, process in a sense that we had a lot of charts, uh, parallel discussions, a lot of people participated in this call. And it wasn't hard. You, it, now it looks simple as we have, you know, goal at, uh, at two and we are at the level of one, but sometimes people argue about where we are in the position, what we have, what we don't have, full understanding of what it means that we have um, some data or governance or how the governance work or do we have standards or which standards do we have. So this is the this was the process and this is uh, how uh, it looked like. We organized in uh, with the support of USAID several of these workshops outside of Serbia, outside of Belgrade, sorry, uh, the, the capital and We've been there for two, three days. We've pushed them to sit together for three days to discuss all of these uh, activities. And this helped us um, um, jointly understand where we want to go. Uh, next slide, please. Although I say, although I say this was a, this was a, um, a, a, a teamwork, I think that at the end we designed a team because at the beginning, all of these entities were um, each one of them on their own. Uh, but after the whole process of 12 months, I think we understand now each other. We know where we are and we have a clear understanding of where we want to go and why these gaps need to be filled with, with the, the action plans that we designed. I've uh, put here uh, also the my, my email address and I would be uh, more than willing to share and uh, um, in more details on how we approach the whole uh, program. Thank you. Great.
I hope you can hear the applause for you, Yelena. And also, thank you so much for getting up early to be a part of this session. And uh, thank you for raising those points about you know, how having a standardized methodology and having a very strong and broad coalition enabled the important work in health information system strengthening to be able to continue despite some uh, political change. So with that, we'd like to move now to Niger. There you go. So I would like to introduce now uh, Dr. Aida Munkela, who is the uh, Director of Statistics for the Ministry of Health in Niger. And she has a doctoral degree in medicine from the University of Abdou Mumuni in Niamey and a master's degree in international health from the Institute of Public Health and Epidemiology and Development, at the University of Bordeaux in France. So thank you so much. Uh, for joining us, Dr. Aida. For now, I will turn it over to you for your presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. But before I want to ask your indulgence <laughs> for my English, which is not uh, uh, very uh, uh, good. <laughs> okay, I am. I have a pleasure to share with you the experience of Niger. Uh, about uh, the implementation of uh, uh, SOCI and uh, stakeholders engagement and uh, gender aspects. Okay, uh, we implement uh, SOCI. SOCI is a stage of continuous uh, improvement of a health information system. Uh, and this is a work group which, uh, uh, which um, uh, work with us to implement uh, this uh, this tool. Okay, uh, about the context, uh, I can say that uh, Niger Information Health System reform began in 2020 uh, in 2011 with uh, a development of a strategic plan for 10 years uh, to from uh, 2013 to 2022. Um, and during this implementation, uh, we review our data collection tools, and, and uh, this uh, revision was supported by many technical and financial partners like Global Fund, Gavi, UNICEF, WHO, USAID with uh, Shizu Project in 20, uh, 2019. Yeah. Uh, at the end of this strategic plan, we uh, conducted many assessments, uh, many global um, final uh, assessments of a strategic plan and uh, uh, HIS uh, assessment with SOCI tool uh, with the support of USAID Chizu and another assessment of our DHIS tool with the support of Gavi. Those assessments uh, allowed us to uh, develop a new, a new um, uh, strategic plan for four years from 2023 to uh, 2026 with uh, the support of Shizu also and the uh, Global Fund. Uh, we conducted this assessment with SOCI in five steps. The first, uh, we established and training a core team for uh, this assessment. Secondly, we defined an approach and documentation collection. Uh, third, we assessment workshops and organized by working group, build the consensus, current and goal. Uh, which no SOCI implementation, we have to define actual situation and uh, the situation that we want to reach uh, our goal. And the fourth mini workshops to define and prioritize activities. And finally, it is to develop the roadmap. Uh, about the results, um, we have in, in red, in red, our actual situation, and in green, our uh, situation that we want to reach in a few years. 
And uh, the results show us that we have some problem with HIS management workforce uh, and uh, ICT infrastructure and uh, data quality and use. About management and workforce, we have uh, a little workforce, workforce and uh, a lack of training here. And uh, in this one, uh, about this uh, domain, we have, we use uh, DHIS2, and uh, it is a web, a web application that use um, laptops, phone, Android, uh, tablets, and uh, internet. And uh, in our country, uh, the coverage uh, of internet is very little, around uh, 30%. Uh, it is a, a big challenge with, with us, for us. And uh, this one, uh, HIS <clears throat> standard and the interoperability, we have a lack of procedures and we use some uh, application, but they are not interoperable. Those are the three main problem for, for uh, health information system in Niger. But we have also to improve data quality and use and uh, uh, aspect of leadership and uh, governance. Okay. This also is a, a result about subcomponents of uh, SUSI. Uh, we have to improve financial management, communication network. I said that before because we use a web application, web-based web application, application, and our coverage of internet is very, um, very lack. Yeah, and business continuity because we have a insufficient uh, procedure. Yeah. These are uh, gender aspects. Uh, here we have uh, 50%, 50% because in HIS leadership and uh, coordination, we have some problem because in a coordination group, we discuss uh, not enough about uh, gender. This is a problem. And for HIS training and education, uh, our plan is not disaggregated by gender. And for data exchange, I have uh, said it, uh, we, uh, we, don't we, we do not have uh, disaggregate our data by, by gender. But with uh, HIS uh, strategic planning, this aspect is take an account with uh, reporting and analytic features and uh, data synthesis and communication. Also, we have, a, we have, uh, we have an, an effort that uh, if, if we, with three uh, subcomponents, component, we have uh, the three points with uh, 50%. Uh, but it's important to, to note that in my direction, uh, health information system direction, the, I am the director and I'm a woman. And we have four divisions. Uh, in those divisions, the two are managed by women, uh, division of communication and division of uh, statistics are, are managed by, um, by women. And uh, in Niger, we have many challenges uh, like equity, because we have many vulnerable population with, uh, which uh, must be taken in account in our plan. I think it is the end. Thank you very much. And I apologize with my English <laughs> once more again. Thank you, Dr. Aida. That was fantastic. And again, no need to apologize. <laughs> so let us move now from uh, Niger to Indonesia. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Noni Parmawati. She is a Senior Monitoring and Evaluation Manager for the CHISU program in Indonesia. And she has a master's degree in public health from the University of Indonesia, concentrating in health information systems. And in her current role, she is responsible for leading the overall monitoring, evaluation, and learning activities 
for the program in the country. So over to you, Noni. Okay, thank you, Steve, for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending this class. Uh, this is uh, my pleasure, and uh, I'm happy to meet you all today. Uh, uh, that I have this experience to uh, share with you, uh, sharing about some experience from Indonesia on how we integrating the gender. Okay, so uh, today I'm going to uh, share uh, with you how Chisu Indonesia integrating gender into the health information system uh, strengthening program. Uh, to start the presentation, uh, I would like to uh, share with you a, a background about the gender condition in Indonesia. Uh, and this uh, condition uh, might be also the same condition in some of the other countries where uh, we see that uh, gender is overlooked in the uh, health information system. Uh, why? Because uh, mostly gender is uh, defined or uh, look is only uh, limited to the sex disaggregated data, but actually uh, gender is beyond that definition. And then second, uh, women are not in the decision making roles, even though women are in the digital transformation field, but actually uh, they have very limited access and uh, very limited connection to the, uh, for example, network developer or maybe the technology developer compared with the male uh, colleagues. Uh, and the third uh, background here is there's an equal male and female domination in digital health transformation. Uh, it means that uh, there's uh, an equal or lack of the woman's influence and voices uh, in the digital transformation. Okay, so for uh, CISO Indonesia, actually gender uh, working across all the strateg uh, strategic objective. Uh, as mentioned by Steve in the beginning, that uh, for CISO Indonesia, we have three strategic objectives, uh, the HIS leadership and governance system, standard and interoperability, data use and data quality. So through this across uh, uh, strategic objective, uh, gender is integrating into the planning uh, implementation and monitoring of the health information system strengthening program. So it means that using this three approach, uh, we are trying to integrate the gender into all the uh, all aspects. Uh, in terms of the planning, uh, actually we identified clearly uh, in the in the beginning how we want to uh, include the gender approach uh, in our annual work plan and uh, identify also uh, clearly what activities that we want to do. So in terms of the uh, implementation, first about uh, gender equity in the leadership and decision making, uh, CISO Indonesia encouraging gender parity in the health information system technical working group, in the leadership activities and decision making. Uh, the HIS technical working group uh, uh, is at the national and the subnational level. This is a multi-stakeholder engagement. So the member are uh, from the, for example, Ministry of Health, Hospital Association, Pharmacist Association, uh, other professional association, private sectors, development partners, donor implementing partners, and other organization and is institution that have concern and uh, uh, have focus on the digital transformation agenda. So this is really multi-stakeholder engagement. And uh, as may see in the graphic, uh, actually uh, we encourage the gender par parity here, both in the chairmanships and in the membership, where there's 40% uh, of uh, female uh, in the chairmanship and 24% of uh, women in the uh, membership. And the roles for, uh, from this uh, technical working group is actually to coordinate the ecosystem, uh, to provide inputs for the HIS strengthening and digital transformation in Indonesia. And this technical working group has been uh, developed uh, in the last year and uh, they have been very active in also to provide input and to monitor uh, the implementation of the digital transformation in Indonesia. Uh, next, uh, the implementation under the standardization and uh, interoperability. 
uh, CISU also encourage the participation of women in the events. Uh, not only as participants, but uh, CISU also encourage women to have roles as resource person, uh, facilitators, and trainers. And in the graphic, you may see that in the last two years, both in 2022 and 2023, we have equal participation of women in our events. And our events uh, are categorized as workshop, trainings, mentoring, F uh, FGD, and, uh, and, so, and, uh, and others. And also uh, under the interoperability, uh, we also work on the sex disaggregated data, metadata mapping, development, and data standardization in uh, ministry, ministry of Health documentation and interoperability guidelines. So we make sure how we have the uh, gender integrated, not uh, only in uh, internal CISU, but uh, also in within the Ministry of Health and the government doc uh, documentation. Okay. Uh, next, in terms of the implementation on data analysis and data use, uh, CISU worked to improve existing dashboard to ensure that data are disaggregated by sex. So, for example, uh, under the TB and maternal neonatal health uh, dashboard, we strengthen to have like more meaningful uh, of the sex disaggregation and more meaningful of data analysis. Uh, secondly, uh, we also work on providing uh, guidance on improving the interpretation and use of health data to identify and address sex differential and gender related issue. This is uh, we implemented through the data into action training and mentoring for our uh, key partners and also for the governments. And the third is uh, we're highlighting areas for inclusion of gender in data governance principle and documentation. Uh, so this is to protect people and also to have uh, to promote the, uh, the equity. Uh, the last part of the monitoring, so in terms of the monitoring, uh, as uh, uh, mentioned by Steve in the beginning, that we use the SOCHI framework, which is in Indonesia, the SOCHI framework then adopted into the what we call the digital maturity index. So the, the digital maturity index uh, become our tools to monitor the gender evaluation in the health information system. And uh, having the total of 2.54 out of the total score five, uh, there are seven parameters highlighting on the gender out of 32 parameters. So if you uh, may see here, uh, mostly in, in each of the parameters, the scoring are still low on the gender. It's around two. Uh, so that's become our baseline and become uh, still our homework, how to increase the gender integration in, uh, into uh, the health information de uh, development. Uh, and this is uh, the implementation of the digital maturity index has been conducted last year in 2022. So we are going to conduct uh, the DMI assessment for uh, 2023 and for the upcoming years. To, to see the evaluation of the uh, digital maturity. Okay, I think uh, that's, uh, I can share with you some experience from Indonesia. Uh, I'll stop here and offer to Steve, thank you. Great, thank you so much, Noni. At this point, I'd like to invite the presenters to come and take the stage and also to take the opportunity to introduce uh, Dr. Dibi Konan, who is the resident advisor for CHISU in Niger. He's a medical doctor um, with a tremendous experience in health information systems. So please, if you can go ahead and take your seats up on the stage. Okay, that'll give you a microphone as well. Okay, thank you very much. All right, and now let me move uh, to a few questions and then we will also check online. Let's see if there are any questions here online at the moment. I do not see any yet. Okay, we will go to the ones that I have prepared. And of course, any questions here in the room before we get started? 
All right. So the first question then, um, let me start with uh, Indonesia, with, uh, with Noni. Uh, so you described a lot of work that you have been doing um, around integrating gender into your work and some of the successes. Can you describe any challenges as far as either the planning or the implementation, any resistance from those who are involved in, uh, in the work that we do? Yeah, okay, Steve, thank you for the question. So in terms of the challenges, uh, as you may see that uh, the first challenges is, I think how to bring the uh, understanding uh, that gender is uh, actually beyond the definition of uh, sex disaggregated data. So I think that's the main uh, problems that I think in most of places have uh, having currently, because when we say gender is like, uh, they understand, uh, okay, uh, I already integrate the gender into our program because we already have this number of sex disaggregated by male and female. We already an uh, analyzed the data, but actually that's beyond that. Uh, so as uh, I share with you that how we integrate the gender into the HIS governance, how we have more uh, influence and hearing more voices for the women, I think that's all also very important and how we integrate also the gender into the development of the standardization and interoperability in terms of the health information system i think that's also uh, important for uh, to highlight uh, under the gender thank you and uh, secondly uh, challenges maybe um, to integrate the gender uh, it's require a multi-stakeholders uh, focus uh, if we talk about health information system, so this is not only the responsibility of Ministry of Health, for example, or maybe health practitioners, but this is like multi-stakeholders. And this is takes time because uh, there's a lot of things to do uh, to integrate the gender. So I think there's still our homework to, to taking care. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Noni. Uh, so Dr. Aida, let me come to you next. Um, you described so much very interesting work about looking at the overall health information system and looking at the gender scores. I guess now that you have set, you have identified where Niger is as far as gender in the health information system, how will you keep the focus um, on gender as we move into the health information system strengthening in the future? Okay, thank you. Uh, firstly, you um, in Niger in nineteen in twenty nineteen we we starting reviews data collection tool. In this process, uh, we we have uh, an engagement of all partners like uh, UNFPA, WHO, and those partners. Uh, they make uh, an advocacy to integrate it gender aspect in the, in the data collection tool, firstly. So in, uh, in uh, SA, in, uh, in SOCI, the aspect that which, which not appear is what uh, the, the discussion which appear in the uh, coordination activities in, uh, let's say, in an, uh, in, uh, when we organize some meeting Yes, in this aspect, is sometimes we are not uh, we are not seeing many women in this uh, aspect, and uh, in coming in uh, now um, strategic plan we are writing, we try to integrate it some activities, which integrated gender aspect in this uh, in this plan is uh, what we are trying to do in the coming years. Great, thank you very much. Um, so let's see, let me move to um, Yelena. Yelena, are you still with us online? Yes, I am. Yelena, can you speak? Yes, I, I, I am speaking. I'm not sure if you can hear. Ah, there you are. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Such a big head. <laughs> Great. Um, so a question for you. You described um, in the process of the eHealth Steering Committee bringing together all of these different stakeholders, you know, finance, Ministry of Defense, so many people and so many organizations outside of health. 
Um, how do you how do you convince some of these stakeholders, these non-governmental stakeholders or stakeholders outside of health to engage in the health information system strengthening and digital transformation efforts, either in your work as NALED or um, in your the work you do for the Center for Fourth Industrial Revolution? Um, thank you for for this question. It uh, it actually is the matter of um, their own interest. <laughs> Uh, because uh, what we do is that we try to share information because um, during this, these times, a lot of things are moving very fast, especially in the digital era. And the reason and the way we um, kind of collaborate with everybody and group the stakeholders together is by helping them share as fast as possible the information about their own advancement among each other. So this helped us actually group uh, them all uh, with the same goal. And the second thing was at the beginning, it was harder because um, um, they all had their own separate goals. And at that point, it was harder to kind of uh, put them together because they all had their own ideas on how to advance in the in the uh, health information system development, their own system. But then as soon as they uh, started understanding things in the same manner, I, I showed on my slides how we worked on setting the base and understanding at the beginning and where we are going and understand that we have to do it jointly. So each one of us has um, its own role in this whole uh, process. It helped us actually stay with the group together. And then the continuation is also important that uh, we didn't lose the momentum. We, as soon as we developed the program, we started working on the action plan. And as soon as the action plan was implemented, we started with the tracking the implementation. Every three months, we check where we are. We group the group again together and check where we are. So this means uh, we had a continuation that helped us um, actually stay uh, focused and stay uh, have the group involved, have everybody still um, involved in the process. But we also did, and uh, uh, maybe I can, I'll have the opportunity to show that later, uh, we also had a lot of surveys that we did among um, each of the stakeholders to better understand their interest in participating. Great. And actually, yes, Yelena, I wanted to ask you about the survey. Can we bring the slides back up? Um, I think you've just done some very interesting surveys looking at, uh, again, some additional groups that are, of course, a key part of the, the digital transformation efforts. Can we bring the slides back up? Okay. Great. Yelena, do you see your slides no. here? Yes, I can hear. I can see them. Uh, so I just wanted to show at, at one example. Be, besides working on the on the surveys among the citizens or patients, uh, working on surveys among uh, different ministries, uh, different entities that are participating, like the the educational system and so on, we also worked uh, on understanding why the doctors would like the digitalization and what's the biggest obstacle that they currently have in working on their own work, you know, when they're providing their services, what's their to, uh, what what makes them uh, less efficient. So we did a huge survey and I just showed here only two examples, only two slides um, among them. So what we identified here, as you can see that 30% um, uh, of time or more than four hours every day, uh, a doctor spends on documentation, on administration, on um, preparing documents that are needed to support uh, the findings that he had with uh, while working with the, with the patient, while uh, analyzing the status of the patient. So um, they, they themselves said that they use a paper documentation that's uh, um, overwhelming for, for them. And the reason why they would support the digitalization is, first of all, to resolve the issue of um, a documentation that they have to do. Can, I do. can we do also the second slide? Certainly. And... Um, what we also identified, besides them complaining or complaining or saying how much uh, effort they spent on administration, we also wanted to understand, okay, what do you need uh, to perform better? You know, besides having a digital system, what, how informational system can help you um, in, uh, in improving your own uh, work? And they all said, I want to know more about my patients. So this was 
this was the key the key thing and uh, the key element of digitalization that they recognize whatever we can do to digitalize and share the information uh, about the health condition of my patient that's the key thing and that's the reason why i would support the digitalization so this is the focus of the informational system to pr- on, on perspective when we are looking at the perspective of the doctors to provide them with the information about their patient so this is uh, how we are trying to set this whole uh, whole system when we are looking from the perspective of the of the doctor. So we have all of these perspectives different in this system, but one of these that we want to clear uh, with the with the doctors is have the system with less administration, have it digital so that it's uh, uh, pre-designed, uh, pre-orchestrated, and allow them share information about the patient. We also have, of course, a different dimension when we are looking at the patients, what they want. So we looked at all of these aspects prior we started designing um, the system. I just wanted to show how it's not only the the teamwork that we had in workshops, but we also tried to reach as many people uh, in Serbia as possible to understand the full full system. This was the survey done on 1,500 uh, doctors. We also had uh, a survey done on the representative sab- sample of the patients in Serbia. So uh, just the examples. And again, um, I, I would like uh, to say that we did it, did this and I want to, to thank um, USAID and CHIZU for helping us on doing also these surveys because it's sometimes we need to do it quickly and uh, uh, to provide information to the government and um, this is how it was done. Great. Thank you so much, Elena, for uh, for presenting that. And I know it sounds obvious. We're thinking about digital transformation of the health sector, but so in so many of these discussions, we are often involving people at the very high levels. But actually, to have the uh, government of Serbia being willing and, and seeking out the opinions of of uh, the prospective clients as well as the health workers to incorporate into the overall digital transformation, I think is uh, is very commendable. Um, if I can just say have... one word, uh, Steve, of sorry, uh, just just to add that, you know, very, although it seems obvious, uh, just the fact that we asked helps. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I know that some of the, these uh, conclusions might seem obvious, but um, if you are just, um, if you are the one to 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 give them as, as a um, result, if you are the one saying, okay, I know what the doctors want, it's completely different than from asking them and understanding the perspective and presenting the perspective, their perspective when you are designing the system. Sorry for interruption. Of course, no, please <laughs> go ahead. Great. I have a few more questions prepared, but did want to again open them up to the audience. Any questions from the room? Okay. Oh, yeah, please go ahead. Hi, my. Hello, yeah, it's working. Hi, my name is Robert Nsuya from Vital Strategies New York office. Um, uh, first of all, thank you very much for the CHISU team for these great presentations uh, and the country experience. Uh, just for cl- a little bit of clarification, um, given the experience from other countries, um, for Nijar, you talked about uh, HIS data quality and use as one of the areas that you focus on, and you indicated that um, the data source comes from the HIS2. And I was just wondering, um, I know in other countries, the HIS2 does not cover all health facilities, and actually it's missing like large um, hospitals or national hospitals or referral hospitals. Uh, they're not included in the uh, DHIS2 system. And I'm just wondering, is this the experience in Niger? And if so, uh, how do you capture, um, you know, in terms of data, to engage data from these large hospitals? And uh, that's the first question for Niger. And the second question for Niger as well, for the Sochi score for gender. Um, I, I've seen that it's a zero or one, and I'm, I'm assuming that, um, those are like uh, if there are certain levels or certain uh, parameters are uh, reached, uh, uh, then you will assign maybe a one or a zero. But I, w- I w- just want to get a clarification on how th- those scores were done or were there any cutoff points in terms of those six uh, areas that you are looking into the gender scores um, or if there were any thre- uh, thresholds. And um, for Indonesia, you talked about uh, looking, um, analyzing gender 
factors or gender-related issues beyond just sex desegregation. And I see that in terms of the uh, uh, human resource and staffing, uh, that's where all, uh, you are doing very great in those areas. But when it comes to data analysis and use, I still so see that um, the focus was only sex desegregated. Are there any plans uh, in future in trying to modify or improve on the data collection process that will include uh, gender be beyond sex desegregation? Thank you. Great. All right. Thank you so much for those uh, three great questions. Uh, let's see. Should we start with Niger or would you like? Yes. Okay. Dr. Okay. Aida, please take it away. Okay. Thank you. I will try to... Uh, to answer to the first question about the implementation of uh, DHCS2 in Niger. Uh, it is implementing in the three levels of uh, care, uh, uh, care structures. Yeah, care, uh, care infrastructures. Uh, the first level with uh, um, uh, central, central Health facilities in the first level, there are 1,322 1, health facilities in the first level at public level. And we have also private, private. there are 400 uh, health facilities in private. And in the second uh, level, we have uh, regional uh, or provincial uh, hospitals, they are uh, uh, around um, 30, and in the third level, we have uh, seven national hospitals, and all uh, the, those health facilities use DHS uh, to to uh, yeah to to manage their, to manage their uh, information system in the routine. Yeah, I don't know if I answer the the question. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, about the gender consideration uh, in SOCI assessment, let's say SOCI score was computed automatically based on the consensus building score and uh, in the six uh, aspect component, let's say. Gender aspect integrated, integration aspect were embedded into some scale of measurement in, when you, when you are looking, and if in this uh, we see the if the, is if in the in the point we identify the, the let's say the gender aspect, we noted one. If not, we we noted zero, and after we additional all all points to have the, the score of. Uh, the gender is what we, we, we generate the score of gender. And uh, let's say in, uh, in Niger, uh, we are six components, so six subcomponents. So we, we have, uh, uh, let's say, gender aspect which we uh, would reach in three subcomponents. We have not in three components. So we, in uh, our coming, uh, strategic plan, we are try to implement it, those aspects in, uh, in the next strategic plan. It's okay. I think just one other point I wanted to mention is that the, one of the things that we really appreciate about the Sochi model is that gender is integrated, in addition to the composite score, gender is integrated into a number of the other scores. And particularly as you move from emerging towards the optimized in all of these areas, you cannot reach optimized until you are being gendered equity inclusive, because we know that you may have policies and procedures, but if it is only being defined by a small group and not a representative group, we cannot reach that optimized level of the health information system in any domain. So Noni, let me turn it to you for the yeah. last, okay, uh, last answer here on in Indonesia. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Robert, for your question about uh, the, in terms of the data collection, uh, currently in Indonesia, uh, we are collecting on the sex disaggregated data. Uh, why? Because uh, in Indonesia, the officially uh, sex uh, type is uh, two, so is it a male and female. So currently we are collecting uh, in terms of data collection that what we collect. 
uh, but in terms of the data analysis and data use, uh, besides on in advance to the sex disaggregated, we might also insert a gender uh, issue there. Like for uh, for example, uh, when we are talking about like for example the TV, uh, how then uh, we can an, uh, we can analyze uh, for example why the cases for TB in women is higher than uh, the cases uh, in male, uh, for, uh, for example. So there's a gender uh, perspective there and gender issue that can be inserted there. And I think uh, Chisu also work on the other piece uh, on the artificial intelligence. So, uh, and we are uh, starting to prototype, uh, starting to find uh, a type to work on the AI. I think that's uh, where we can also insert gender into the sex disaggregated data. So I think that's what I can share from GC Indonesia. Thank you. Great. All right. Well, thank you very much. We have reached time. So thank you very much, Yelena, for joining us online. And thank you so much to our presenters, Noni, Dr. Aida, Dr. Dibby. And thank you so much for the participation and great questions from the room. Thank you. Thank you.